Hi everybody, I hope you're well. Today I will read from a book titled Seven Palms, the Thomas Mann House in Pacific Palisades, Los Angeles, by Francis Nenick and Sebastian Stumpf, published by Spector. Francis Nenick wrote, Places don't tell stories, and if they do, the stories they tell aren't the ones you expect. The history of a place doesn't lie in what you may find there but rather in what you find when you stay away. I never visited the Thomas Mann house in Pacific Palisades. I have no intention of ever going there. I just feel like telling the story of this house. I will scour libraries and archives for the ordinary and the absurd. I am going to spin yarns out of the rays of California's magnificent sun. I will skip along the blank spaces. There is no one at home. The flow of their habits and the irresistible desire for meat have driven the residents of the villa outdoors. Thomas Mann is in Westwood for a haircut. His wife Katya tries to get the leanest cut of beef at the market. And the maid has the day off and is laying on the beach in Santa Monica. Who would blame her? Her room is on the ground floor, directly under the balcony, in permanent shade. And then there is the garage, which borders directly on her tiny empire, and has a wall so thin you not only hear the cars, but can almost smell their exhaust. The air in the maid's room is stifling and stagnant, perhaps that's why she's left the window open. But it's not her fault. She couldn't have known that I was going to drop by and climb in. The maid's room. A linoleum floor. This is the very first thing you notice when you stand on the windowsill and try to jump over the bathtub. Getting into the tub isn't an option because it is still wet and I don't want to leave any traces. Nor do I want to have to remove any. I just want to wander through the rooms for a bit before their occupants return to fill them with life again. Besides, being a good burglar detective, I brought the building plans and have informed myself not only about the property, but also about the individual rooms and the peculiarities of the interior. And therefore, I know that all the private rooms of the villa have oak floors, except for the maid's room. The owner decided that linoleum would be good enough here. He also paid close attention to subtle differences in other areas and had the architect mark them clearly in the building plan. The room is definitely too small for two people, especially since its furniture already take up a large part of the space. Books, on the other hand, are absent and shelves are also missing. But clothes and shoes are scattered all over the floor, and even the radio on the small bedside table seems to have been placed there somewhat casually. Apart from that, there's not much to see. The room serves the girl as the girl serves the house. Nenik goes on to talk about the kitchen, the laundry room, the pantry, the dining room, the living room, the study, the heater closet, Thomas Mann's bedroom, Thomas Mann's bathroom, Thomas Mann's dressing room, Katya Mann's bedroom, Katya Mann's bathroom, Katya Mann's dressing room, a first guest room, another bathroom, a second guest room, a third guest room. The story of some houses is the story of a city, the story of a country, even the story of the world. In the case of Thomas Mann, the story is well known. It has been told countless times. It is the story of how this successful author leaves his grand house in Munich's Poschinger Strasse in February 11, 1933, to give lectures on the sufferings and greatness of Richard Wagner in Amsterdam, Brussels and Paris, but soon learns that he himself will suffer persecution and arrest by the National Socialists should he return home which is why he decides not to and instead seeks exile for himself and his family, first in Switzerland, then in France. At the end of 1933, 
they returned to Switzerland, first to Zurich and then to Kusnacht, from where the Mann family sets out on February 15, 1938, to travel to the French port of Cherbourg, on board an ocean liner for America. They arrive in New York on February 21st. Thomas Mann is immediately surrounded by reporters and declares, Where I am, there is Germany. I carry my German culture inside me. I live in contact with the world and I don't see myself as a fallen person. During the following weeks, the Mann family ponders the question of where to settle. The destination is the hills west of LA, and there is a good reason for this, because not only is the Pacific climate better than that of Princeton, but there is also a large local German emigre community, and it keeps growing. And thus, Thomas Mann will also go to California, the topographic incarnation of the American dream. In the form of a literary essay, Francis Nenick recounts the history of this house in detail for the first time. Not only does he tell of the lives of the Mann family members, but he also gives a voice to the men and women who planned the house, who built it and who worked in it. Most of these people were unknown until now or have been forgotten over the years. Their experiences form a panorama from which emerges a multitude of stories and even adventures. Nenik's essay is paired with photography by Sebastian Stumpf, who visited the Seven Palms in January 2017, only weeks after the vacant property had been purchased by the German government. Over the course of a day, Stumpf took precise photographs of the house in an interim state. They show an abandoned residence, with little evidence of the Mann family's former presence. The book was designed by Ina Kwon and was printed in Germany. Ask for it at your local bookstore. Thank you for joining me and see you in the next video. Bye.